Hello and welcome to ILTV's Evening Update. I'm Aaron Porras here with the latest news from Israel. On behalf of 17 Palestinian municipalities, the Arab Rights Group Adala and the East Jerusalem-based Legal Aid and Human Rights Center joined together to petition the High Court of Israel to overturn the controversial Settlement Regulations Bill. The bill was just passed and retroactively legalizes over 4,000 settlement homes built on privately owned Palestinian land. According to an attorney for Adala, the sweeping and dangerous law permits the expropriation of vast tracts of private Palestinian land, giving absolute preference to the political interests of Israel. Israel's Attorney General Avichai Mandelblit said before the passage of the law on Monday that the legislation was indefensible in court and that he expected legal opposition. Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman made similar statements, saying that the chance of the law being rejected by the High Court is 100%. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu reportedly told investigators that he was unaware of any champagne bottles being given to his wife Sarah by the billionaire Arnon Milchan. According to reports by the Channel 2 last night, Netanyahu apparently told police that Sarah, quote, is an independent person and I am an independent person, end quote. Asked about the boxes of cigars which the Prime Minister is reported to have also accepted from Milchan, Netanyahu responded by saying, quote, it doesn't amount to hundreds of thousands as far as I can tell, but there was a box of cigars here and a box of cigars there." End quote. The Prime Minister also told investigators that he bought many cigars over the years with his own money. Netanyahu has been questioned under caution three times in the police investigation, named Case 1000, and in a separate case dealing with an alleged attempt to broker favorable media coverage with Yediot Achonot publisher Arnon Moses. The Shin Beit Security Agency has arrested members of a terrorist cell that was responsible for a number of Molotov cocktail attacks on Highway 443, the main road connecting Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, and the Judean region via Modi'in. The cell members are residents of a nearby Palestinian town of Beit Anan, located within Jerusalem's municipal boundaries. They are accused of throwing Molotov cocktails at cars and terrorizing drivers on Highway 443 on at least seven separate occasions. A military prosecutor filed an indictment yesterday against the suspects, requesting to keep them in custody throughout the trial. The IDF has recently increased its anti-terror activities in the eastern sector of Gush Etzion, following the increase in Molotov cocktail and stone-throwing attacks on Israeli settlements and vehicles. Some 60 Palestinian suspects have been detained in the past year for similar activity. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told Belgian Prime Minister Charles Michel yesterday that Belgium should cease all funding to organizations which work to undermine the IDF and the State of Israel. Netanyahu made a similar request to British Prime Minister Theresa May on Monday, asking that Britain cease all funding to radical leftist NGOs in Israel. He singled out Breaking the Silence as one of the examples of a European-funded NGO which works to weaken the state. Breaking the Silence, which collects testimonies from former IDF soldiers about alleged human rights violations they witness in the territories, denies that it receives any funding from the British government. The Prime Minister's office issued a clarification that said Britain funded Breaking the Silence and other NGOs indirectly via organizations such as Christian Aid and CAFOD, the Catholic International Development Charity. The municipality of Tel Aviv Yafo wants you, me, tourists, and Israelis alike to really take advantage of all the cultural events that the Jewish state's hub for never-ending events has to offer. So following in the footsteps of London and New York, a discount tickets TKTS booth will be opening soon. The booth will be available at Dizengoff Center and will hold tickets for concerts, exhibitions, and much, much more at prices of up to 50% off. Ticket sales for each event will be available between a few days prior to the event and lasting up until just hours before the show. According to the director of the Tel Aviv Global Program in the Tel Aviv Jaffa municipality, quote, Why shouldn't a tourist go hear the Philharmonic, watch a play with translated subtitles, or enjoy a dance show just like the Israelis do when they travel abroad? End quote. All cultural events and event holding establishments in the city will be invited to participate in selling tickets to their venues through TKTS. That's all for now. Stay tuned on ILTV.TV for our main daily broadcast playing after this. I'm Aaron Porras and see you next time with our morning briefing from Israel at 8 a.m. Eastern Time.